terms of supplements, I'm a big fan of berberine. We know that in randomized trials head to head, looking at berberine versus metformin, that berberine outperforms metformin. They're about similar efficacy, but berberine has fewer side effects in terms of zone two exercise ability and other things. We also know that uh, inositol is incredibly effective. Um, it's a B vitamin, as you know, myonositol, d chiro inositol. There was a, an article in the New England Journal of Medicine looking at PCOS and d chiro inositol that is so old. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I, it's like around the same age of when I went through my medical training and, let, and yet nobody talked about using yeah. B vitamins or inositol to help with PCOS when I went through my training. Well, I have a question for you, the berberine thing. Um, do you recommend it in people? I mean, not recommend it. Does it seem to help in those people who are not necessarily uh, diagnosed with PCOS, but have um, high insulin levels uh, in general? So they may be obese or central adiposity, or they may be someone who is pre-diabetic, or um, does it seem to have some of the same benefits? Yes, so I use berberine in a lot of different settings, not just. I had a, one of my relatives calling. Maybe she's no watching this video and wants to talk about her relatives. <laughs> <laughs> I, I should have put us in airplane mode. Sorry about that. Um, no so, so I do, you know, the way I think about insulin resistance and people who have elevated insulin, which is one of the things that I've struggled with most of my life, um, is that there's not one like magic formula. There's not one thing that makes a difference. You have to look for pleiotropic effects. And so you want to combat insulin resistance or insulin block is how I usually describe it in multiple ways. So with the way that you eat, certainly adding on intermittent fasting. So when you eat different nutraceuticals. So I would say berberine is just one of many, but it's associated with weight loss and randomized trials. It's associated with insulin sensitivity, but so is fish oil. So is um, yeah. chromium. So there's a lot of, you know, lipoic acid. There's lots of different ways that we can work on the insulin signal. And berberine is just one of those. And then berberine also has all these other benefits, pleiotropic effects beyond the insulin signal in terms of helping your gut, uh, helping with inflammation, reducing um, the insulin signal, but other things as well. Do you use berberine much in your practice? You know, that's why I was asking you about it. I really don't. Um, and I feel just because exactly what you said, I think that uh, I feel that most people um, focus too much on the supplement part of all of this and focus too little on um, the real benefits of uh, diet and lifestyle. I do love some of the, so some of the supplements that I started using that helped me on my journey when after I read Hormone Cure and I um, did a lot of my own research, I realized that I was really, my hormones were imbalanced and I changed my diet. I uh, decreased the glycemic index. I started sleeping better and managing my stress. But I also used like ashwagandha and I use rhodiola, and I supplemented with, um, you know, omega threes. And um, I think I had done either chromium or something at that time. But there was a concoction of basically vitamin D, B vitamins, ashwagandha, and rhodiola that literally were like my mainstay during that time. And it really helps me bridge um, to the place where you know I didn't. I talk about them all the time. I'm like adaptogens have changed my life. Um, and not in the sense that I would have done it and I would have, if I hadn't changed my lifestyle and diet and all of that stuff, it, but it really did help in um, some of those things. So I like to use very, very few ones, especially ones that I have good experience um, with. Um, I love, you know, of course, vitamin D is something that I recommend to so many people uh, because of its immune modulatory effects um, and its effects on the gut.